Alona Waiwa, welcome to the Question Hour show from the Parliament House Complex, where we bring you important unstart questions asked by the members of the Upper House during the 250th session of the Rajya Sabha and the response given by the government. I'm Krithi Mishra and joining me on the show is my colleague Akhilesh Suman. So Akhilesh, let's take our viewers through important questions and answers in the Question Hour show. And the first question in this edition is from member Sasmit Patra and this question pertains to the Ministry of Defence. And Mr. Patra has asked about the measures undertaken by the government for modernization and upgradation of fighter aircraft by Indian Air Force and he's also inquired about budgetary allocation for the same. Right, Kriti. Uh, and the answer is very precise. The minister says the modernization of the armed forces is an ongoing process and is executed in conjunction with the roadmap laid down in the long-term integrated perspective plan which specifies the capabilities that the armed forces, including Indian Air Force, need to acquire over a 15 years period, 2012 to 2027, considering the current capabilities of the armed forces, the emerging threat in the region, and the prevailing technological environment. The modernization of the armed forces, including Indian Air Force, is carried out by continuously upgrading the existing systems to maintain their operational relevance and replacing old systems with state-of-the-art systems. The budget allocated during the financial year 2019-20 for modernization to Indian Air Force is 36,409.89 crore rupees. In fact, member Sasmat Patra joined us on the Question Now show just a short while back and this is what he had to say on government's response. You asked a very important question about modernization of aircraft in Indian Air Force. How important is the issue and how do you take government's response? So I have received the response from the government and the Minister of Defence has responded to it regarding the upgradation and the modernization of the fighter aircraft in the Indian Air Force. And uh, the fact that has been given is that there is a long-term integrated perspective plan which has been in place from 2012 to 2027. And between these 15 years that they have actually identified, they plan to upgrade and modernize the aircraft going forward. And for this regard, the second question that I had placed was, what is the budgetary allocation? For 2019-20, they have identified this as 36,400 nine crores. So I think it's a good uh, allocation that has been made for the fighter aircraft. And going forward, considering the kind of adversities that we are facing on all the fronts of the country, I strongly believe that we need to increase the allocation going forward. But I'm quite satisfied with the answer because beyond this, it's a classified information and should not be given out. But in the public domain, whatever the government has given for the 15-year period of the LTIPP program, I think it sounds very promising. It sounds very positive, And I hope the government takes it up very strongly. In fact, the Defence Minister on the floor of the Rajya Sabha also said that the government is undertaking continuous steps to ensure that there's modernization of not just Air Force but all the armed forces. You see, the Minister of Defence, what he has stated in the Parliament, that uh, modernization, upgradation of the entire armed forces is happening, I think it's a very positive step. As we realise that our hostilities with uh, Pakistan, especially in Kashmir, continues to be on a boil. But at the time, there seems to be a bit of a ceasefire, but going forward, you can never be very sure, especially on the western front of the country, as well as the Indian Ocean and various other areas that we have to cover. So I personally believe that the Indian government taking up this on a stronger measure, as far as the Indian Armed Forces is concerned, is extremely crucial. And especially the Navy as well, the nuclear submarines, and especially our nuclear submarine capabilities have to increase. We have to also replace our aging submarines that are already there for the last 20, 30 years. I think those are challenges. So considering that, the government actually investing in infrastructure and technology is important. But along with that, I would like to add in closing that people also matter. So especially uh, the armed forces, the people who actually man the armed forces have to be taken care of, the families have to be taken care of, the children have to be taken care of, and for that the government should also look into various aspects, whether that's the salary, allowances, pension, all of that should be taken care of. And the next question, Kriti, has been asked by MP Virendra Kumar. He is asking the Minister of Road Transport and Highways the details of various projects proposed to be executed by the National Highways Authority of India during the next three years. In the response, the government says that it has launched the Bharat Mala Pariyoshana Phase 1 in October 2017 to actually develop economic corridors, interior corridors, feeder routes, national corridors, border roads, international connectivity roads, coastal roads, 
will support connectivity roads and expressways with an aggregate length of over 34,800 kilometers at an estimated outlay of 5,35,000 crore rupees spanning over a period of five years. The National Highways Authority of India or the NHAI along with National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited which is the NH, IDCL and state PWDs have been entrusted with the road stretches envisaged for development under this program. Moreover, work under various other schemes such as NHO etc. have also been entrusted to the NHAI for execution and development in a timely manner. Moving on to the next question that has been asked by two members Vikas Mahatme and Mahesh Podar. And these members have questioned the shipping ministry and have asked whether the government is focusing on port connectivity enhancement on major as well as minor ports across the country. The government answer is in affirmative. And it is very important that uh, ports are connected with rails and roads so that uh, one can reach to the ports easily. And the government says uh, India has undertaken 55 rail projects worth rupees 45,883.2 crore and 15 rail projects worth rupees 2,899 crores for enhancing port connectivity at various major and minor ports. The government further says, out of 55 rail projects, 15 projects worth rupees 1,048.20 crore have been completed and 40 projects worth a cost of rupees 44,785 crore are under implementation. Out of 15 rail projects, 10 projects worth rupees 2,592 crore have been completed and 5 projects amounting to rupees 307 crore are under implementation. Expenditure for 38 rail connectivity projects being undertaken by Ministry of Railways till March 2019 is approximately rupees 16,403 crore. For 15 road and 17 connectivity projects undertaken by Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, major ports, the expenditure in last three financial years is approximately 3,204.82 crore. So expenditure is being done and ports are being connected with railways and roads. And the next question Kiti has been asked by member Kupind Reddy. And he is asking Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports whether government plans to encourage the younger generations to take sports as a career option. Well, in the response, the government says that choosing sports as a career option is an individual choice. However, the union government has taken several steps to encourage participation of the youth in sports. Up to 5% reservation is provided in direct recruitment in Group C posts for meritorious sports persons. Sports Authority of India recruits Olympians, also Paralympians, as assistant coaches. The academic programs in sports coaching, physical education and sports allied fields enable career in sports to the youth. Institutions under the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, namely Sports University and also Netaji Subhash National University of Sports, Lakshmi Bai National Institute of Physical Education and Lakshmi Bai National College of Physical Education offer these programs. Let's move on to the next question which has been asked by members Santosh Kumar and which pertains to the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. And Mr. Kumar has asked about the number of Letter of Intents or LOIs issued to non-governmental organizations, educational institutions and also government institutions and others for setting up community radio stations till 31st of October 2019. This is a really interesting question, Kriti, because community radios are becoming popular in the country. And so the minister answers, a total of 711 letters of intents have been issued for setting up of community radio stations in India till 31st October 2019. 415 letters of intents have been issued to non-governmental organizations, 163 to educational institutions, 121 to government institutions and 12 to others. The government further says, there are 273 community radio stations operational in the country till 31st October 2019. And the government is again saying, as per policy guidelines for setting up of CRS, that means uh, community radio stations in India, the permission holder after receipt of all clearances and signing of grant of permission agreement shall set up the community radio stations within three months. And the next question has been asked by member Dr. Banda Prakash. 
and he is asking Minister of Coal whether the government has constituted an inter-ministerial task force to undertake a comprehensive review of existing coal sources of independent power producers having linkages and to consider the feasibility for rationalization of these sources with a view to optimize transportation costs. In the response, the government says that the inter-ministerial task force was constituted in July 2017 to undertake a comprehensive review of existing coal sources of independent power producers having linkages and consider the feasibility for rationalization of these sources with a view to optimize transportation costs given various technical considerations. The underlying objective behind the exercise was to reduce the landed cost of coal due to reduction in transportation cost. And in the second part of the answer, the government goes on to say that the methodology for linkage rationalization of IPPs has been accepted by the government and the same has been circulated on 15th of May 2018 to Coal India Limited and also Singareni Coal Reese Companies Limited to implement the methodology. Linkage rationalization of two IPPs has been done for 2 million tonne with estimated potential annual saving of approximately 118 crore rupees. Let's move on to the last question of this edition of Question R, which has been asked by member Samaji Chhatrapati. And this question pertains to the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change. And Mr. Chhatrapati has asked whether intensive planning has been done to maintain a striking balance between economic development and also the commitments above and beyond the Paris Agreement to save Mother Earth. This is really a very important question, Kriti, for a developing country like India, which needs both development and saving the planet from the environmental degradation. And the answer is, under the Paris Agreement, India submitted its uh, nationally determined contributions to United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, outlining eight targets for post-2020 period, including one, to reduce the emission intensity of its GDP by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 level. Two, to achieve about 40 percent cumulative electric power installed capacity from non-fossil fuel based energy resources by 2030 with the help of transfer of technology and low cost international finance including from Green Climate Fund. And three, to create an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent through additional forest and tree cover by 2030. The other targets pertain to sustainable lifestyles, climate-friendly growth path, climate change adaptation, climate finance, and climate technology and capacity building. India developed and communicated its uh, NDC based on inter-ministerial consultations and national circumstances keeping in view its development priorities. NDC means nationally determined contributions to United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. See, under National Mission for a Green India, grants have been released to states, including seven states lying in Western Ghats, Central and Northern India, like Chhattisgarh, Karnataka, Kerala, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, and Uttarakhand for afforestation activities covering an area of 55,065.4 hectares. Recently, India has announced its commitment of restoring 26 million hectares of degraded land by 2030. So, Akilesh, these were important questions and answers in today's edition of Question Hour. But on the other side, we'll have Prashnakal in Hindi with our colleagues Arvind Singh and Preeti Singh. Stay tuned to Rajya Sabha Television.